Did you know there are no late fines on overdue materials at QPL? We want to make sure everyone can use the library's resources, no matter their circumstances. For more details on QPL's elimination of late fines, visit queenslib.org forward slash goodbye late fines. School is in session and we have free help for homework. BrainFuse Help Now offers homework help online tutoring, and more school support for kids in grades K-12 to daily from 2 to 11 p.m. A library card and Wi-Fi connection are all that your child needs in order to participate. Visit queenslib.org forward slash brainfuse to get started. The next election takes place on November 8th, and early voting starts on October 29th. Visit our blog for more important dates, voting FAQs, voting plans, and voter resources. Welcome to Wellness Wednesdays. I'm Christopher Galarza, Queens Public Library's Community Health Educator. Today, we are joined by City Harvest, whose mission is to end hunger in communities throughout New York City through food rescue, distribution, education, and other practical, innovative solutions. Today, we continue with their second session of six workshops that focus on nutrition information, budgeting tips, and staying active. So please welcome Bianca and Aaliyah from City Harvest. Hi. I'm going to go ahead and share my slides. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to our class today. Bianca's going to take us through some nutrition education, and then I'm going to follow up with a nice little cooking demonstration that I hope you will enjoy. Awesome. Thank you, Aaliyah. Um, so like mentioned before, we are from City Harvest, and this is Eat Healthy, Be Active, and this is um, our second workshop in our series of six. So welcome back if you joined last week. Um, I believe Sophia did the nutrition education portion. Um, awesome. All right, just a little icebreaker we like to do. Um, if you were here last week and you wanna share um, something, that, something new that you learned, you can throw that right in the chat. I learn something new every time I do a class. I learn um, from just refreshing information. <laughs> But I also always learn from uh, folks that join, tips and tricks that they do at home. All right, so some of our objectives and our goals for today's lesson is we're gonna be talking about tips for preparing um, quick, healthy meals at home, different ways to stock our kitchen or in our pantry, and tips for eating out. So let's get right to it. So eating at home tips. So I like to say that the little, you know, dim light in the two years or plus of COVID was that I got an opportunity to really cook again more at home, right? Because we were kind of all uh, more homebound and, you know, staying home more often to stay safe. So I really got an opportunity to cook more. So eating at home is definitely going to be healthier for us. It's going to be more budget friendly. Um, we're going to be able to have control over the ingredients and the items that we are cooking with and adding. So really easy tip for eating at home is to stock our pantries with some essentials, right? So let's talk a little bit about um, our dried goods, right? So our, our canned items, our, um, our pastas, our rices. So what are some staples that you all are keeping at your home or grabbing every time you go to the grocery store? So for me personally, I always have um, some beans. I always like to be honest and say that for me, canned beans are usually uh, more of my go-to rather than dried beans. And that is just 
that is more of a personal preference and a time constraint, right? So the dried beans are great, um, but you know, you have to soak them and cook them. And if you're doing that, that is fantastic. I give you so much credit. But for me, it's just easier to have the the cans on hand um, just for time as well. You know, lots of times I'm not always planning ahead and I'm looking for a healthy yet affordable protein and beans are a go-to. Guys, it doesn't matter which kind. Um, yeah, the protein and the fiber vary slightly amongst our beans, but I always say they're all basically created equal. So whether you like the white, the red, the black, um, kidney beans, chickpeas, lentils, uh, they're all going to have tons of fiber and tons of protein in there for us. And they last a long time. So what I will do when I'm in the grocery store, if I see that they're, you know, lots of times they're like five for five or four for five dollars, um, something that I will stack up and, and have in my cabinet. Um, lots of yeah. grains, you know, things like uh, a bag of pasta, a bag of rice, those will last us as well. So I'm always kind of stocking up on that. Again, if it's a deal or if it's, you know, two for three, it's something that I'm going to grab and keep in my cabinet. Yeah. Awesome. Some of the things that I like to keep in my um, pantry is definitely I have to have at least two different kind of oils. I have mm. olive. Yeah, I have olive, and then I also have the um, grape seed, which I like. But I just wanted to make a note about those beans. Be careful to get the ones that have the low sodium. Uh, I know they have a huge um, variety now that you can choose, yes. you know, sodium, because we want to get as much of that off as possible. And if by chance you can't find it, I think, Bianca, if you rinse them, you can mm -hmm. take off an additional 30% of that sodium. So... It's real important. But my grandmother used to boil beans. Yes. <laughs> it's a time yes. consuming thing. But, you know, I like the, the canned beans as well. They're fine. Yeah. And I mention that, what is it? Brown rice or mm. any kind of rice and bean is like a perfect protein. Mm hmm Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah, protein, nice filler for our dish. You know, we got to have some grains in our diet and these whole grains, right? Like the whole wheat pastas and the brown rice, even quinoa's, um, farro's a great one. You ever go in that like rice section? There's a lot of options. Yes, there is. Barley, you know, I, I always challenge people to, um, you know, venture out out of their comfort zone. What I love now too is that they make a lot of things in smaller, um, smaller packaging. So you don't have to commit to like a big bag of quinoa if you don't know if you're going to like it or not. Um, they have like smaller individual bags that you can definitely purchase um, just to try new things out. I, you know, variety is is great in our diet. Uh, so when I'm thinking about uh, those are like my pantry items, right? My cabinets. When I'm thinking about my refrigerated items or things that uh, or fresh things, I should say, I'm always stocked with onion, garlic, ginger, right? These are nice, hearty uh, veggies that have a little bit longer of a shelf life. And also anytime I do a cooking class, I joke around because the kids always call me out on it. Almost every recipe I start off with, with some onion and some garlic, maybe some ginger, depending on what I'm making, packed with tons of flavor. And they're also um, adding a variety of veggies, right? And and they're, they're, they're just starting off any meal with adding lots of flavor to it. So those are always things that I have. Um, potatoes are another one. Carrots, celery. Sometimes you'll hear that called like a, um, a mirepoix because it's it's a good, they're, again, good uh, hearty vegetables that'll last. And they're usually pretty affordable in, in the grocery store. They're not really items that, um, you know, like I always say, I love asparagus, but I only buy it when it's on sale because it could be kind of pricey. You're going to find that carrot, celery, onions, potatoes are usually always at a, a pretty affordable price. And, you know, they'll they'll last you a little bit longer than, say, like a fresh green or something like that. As far as our freezers go, um, I know for me, uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I am a classic. There are things in the back of my freezer that I don't I don't even know what's back there. <laughs> uh, but I always like to have a packed freezer. It just makes me it makes me feel uh more comforting when I'm at home because I know that I can grab something from the freezer and either, you know, 
throw it into something that I'm making and stretch it. So for example, always bags of spinach, bags of broccoli. Uh, and then whatever you're making, right? If you're making a soup or a stew, you can always throw those frozen veggies in there. Of course, depending on what you're making, the frozen aren't always appropriate if you're making like a fresh green salad or something like that. Um, but even you're freezing your leftovers. I don't know if anyone it does that. I, I am good at doing it. I'm bad at labeling it. So pretty often I got things in my freezer that I'm pulling out. And by the time it's a frost, I'm like, oh, okay, that's what that is. <laughs> um, so I batch cooking is a really easy, quick, affordable tip for cooking at home. So for an example, if you're going to make a chili, right, we're like in the soup and stew, um, soup and stew, you know, time of the year. So I like to make big batches of them. And then what I will do is I will use like the quart containers or the pint containers, usually the clear ones. And I'll make a big, big batch of it. And then I'll freeze. I find that using the smaller ones are better for me because then I can pull it out the night before. And then that's something that I can like bring with me for lunch, right? If I defrost the big one, that's great. But then I have to kind of eat the big container, right? We don't, we can't defrost and then refreeze. Um, but doing big batches, this way you're only cooking one time, right? And then kind of freezing portions of it. I encourage, like I mentioned before, I'm not great at it, but labeling is so helpful, you know, labeling what it is and also what date you put it in, right? This way you can kind of, um, you're able to keep track. Yeah. You know, I make, um, you mentioned soups and stews. Soups are like my favorite, favorite mm. meal. And in the wintertime, fall time right now, I can make like a soup every two weeks. And so another tip, um, is you can put like a bowl in the refrigerator, right? Like a just a you know medium-sized bowl. And when you make a salad, those extra onions go in there. When you're you know you might be making some carrots and you have some leftover, put them in that bowl. The chicken, right, that you had on Sunday, maybe there's some bones left and some you know loose chicken, white meat on there. Put that in that bowl. Guess what? At the end of the week, you can get you some nice chicken stock or vegetable stock, whatever you prefer. Cut up any additional vegetables that you might want to add to that bowl and cook that stuff off. You'll always have something to, to stew or make soup out of. I love soup. so <laughs> Yes, that is fantastic. So every time I do a class, Aaliyah, I always tell people, you know, when I'm cutting the scraps, I'm like, save these. You can throw them in your freezer. You can make stocks from it. I am not so good at doing that. I'm good at doing the process of it. I save them. I freeze them. Um, but I don't always get to making the stock part, but that is always something that's like on my list of things that I want to get better at. Um, yeah. because as food costs rise, right? Like we're all feeling it, um, using yeah. every single bit that you can, right? So like almost having zero waste. And when it comes to fruits and veggies, um, we really can almost have almost zero waste because we, we can utilize them, like you mentioned, you know, throwing them in a pot and, and using them to make a stock or a soup. And, you know, if you're even if you're using like um, like onion peels and the ends of carrots, you'll cook it and then you can just strain it. Right. You don't need to, like, keep all of that stuff if it's not edible. Right. Like if it's not necessarily something you want to eat, but even right. getting all the flavor and the nutrients out of it. That's that stock, and it's the mm. best too. Yeah, so you, yeah. Just some tips, because as you said, things are very expensive. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know if people are checking unit prices. Um, this is something that I definitely started doing as I got older. Um, you know, just checking that like original unit price to make sure. So anything that is going to be like pre-cut, pre-washed, it's always going to be a little bit more expensive per pound, right? The overall price might be cheaper. So you might be looking at, um, you know, a bag of, of cut up carrots, you know, that are a dollar fifty, and then a bag of large carrots that are two fifty, right? But most of the time you're getting more carrots with that bigger bag. Even though they're more expensive, you're getting more money for your, you're getting more bang for your buck, right? You're getting a little bit more carrots for your dollar because prop they're probably cheaper per pound. Um, so sometimes look, not looking at that original price, but looking at that unit price or the pound, um, dollar per pound. I do pretty often, um, 
because you want to get the most out of your money. That small bag of carrots that's, you know, washed and chopped, even though they're 150, they might be a dollar fifty a pound, whereas that bigger bag might be 99 cents. So you're getting more for your money. Now, this is and a time consuming free. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, carrots free as well. Mm. So. Yep. Now, I always tell people this definitely takes a little bit more time, right? If you're going to be, you know, looking at unit prices. But what I find for most of us is that, you know, we're going to the grocery store. And like I said, we're buying a lot of those staples. If you're making similar meals, you know, like each week you make a taco meal and each week you make a pasta. If you're buying the same things, you'll start to know. Like now I know which bag in the carrot section I buy every week because I'm used to it. I've, I've looked before. Um, I know what the best, you know, what the best price is for my dollar. Um, so that's just something that'll come. But going to the grocery store sometimes does is, is time consuming. Um, you know, it, it's because we want to look for the best price, because we want to get the best deal. Um, so that kind of leads us into our next slide, which is our shopping list. <laughs> um, so this is a great little tool for someone starting out or even just, just a tool to use in general. Um, but it, it, it's organized in a way. Now I have gotten, and I will say this is another kind of um, outcome of COVID because I didn't want to spend a lot of time in the grocery store at all. I wanted to be in and I wanted to be out. Even now our time is precious, right? So if we're not looking at all the unit prices and we know we're buying, having this list is so helpful having the list a little bit organized as well. And this is another thing that, you know, practice, I, I've kind of gotten better at, but keeping things together in the same section. Think about when you go to the grocery store, right? If you go, you're, you're, maybe you're walking in, probably most likely walking into the produce section of the grocery store. You know, have your list and you have your onions and your carrots. If you have, I don't know, a loaf of bread in between, right? And then you have your celery and asparagus and so on. What what will happen sometimes is by the time you get to the bread section, you'll have forgotten that you wanted to grab it because it was in between the produce. So just being a little bit more organized. So what I like to do, um, I keep a refrigerated magnet pad right, right on my refrigerator. And I write things down as I either use them or um, run out of them. Or, you know, I open my cabinet and I realize, okay, you know what, I only have one can of black beans. Right. And then I write it down. But this is fantastic because you can literally print this out or, you know, have like a mock model of this in your phone. I know I always joke around depending on <laughs> what generation I'm speaking to. A lot of the times when I say I have that pad and I'm writing things down, I get like a chuckle from people. Um, I know that people are mostly on their phone, so you can easily just use the notepad um, or something like that. Right. Does anyone make shopping lists? Does anyone um, uh, go buy a list? Or do people, are people just kind of using, you know, off the top of their head? A little bit of meal prep too will really help uh, with a shopping list. So kind of knowing, you know, if you're what two or three meals you're going to make um, that week is really helpful. I do kind of like a general, like I know, I know I want to make a pasta this week. I know I want to make a rice dish and I know I want to make, you know, something with a tortilla. And then I kind of go from there. Yeah. Real, being flexible with your recipes, guys, you go into the grocery store and your intention was to make, you know, a broccoli and macaroni dish, but broccoli is really expensive that week. Uh, maybe you're replacing it with cauliflower or eggplant. Maybe you're buying it frozen instead of fresh like you intended. Someone chatted in, Bianca, that um, uh, Cece um, never paid attention to the unit price. Good idea. Mm. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I start can... small. Maybe you just start with your produce and the next time you go, you're, you're doing it with your dry goods and your canned items. But yes. Yeah. And she says that she also walks with a list, but always ends up buying more. Cece, yeah. <laughs> all of us do that <laughs> never go to the supermarket hungry that's oh, the key to that <laughs> yes such a simple concept but i have such vivid memories as a child going to the grocery store opening every bag in the cart 
you know, because I was just starving. Thank God at that time, I, you know, obviously I didn't have control of the money, but I still do it as an adult. <laughs> yeah. That's why the list is so important. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now it's easy, especially if you have Alexa. All you have to do is tell her to add to your list and you've got it. So there's no excuse. <laughs> See, that's why I said, Aliyah, sometimes people, like, when I got my pen and my pad out, they laugh at me. Um, but yes, even, even easier, just shout it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Oh. So talking about healthy meal ideas, we have a picture of our my plate. Um, so I always like to say, uh, Michelle Obama, when the Obamas were in office, they she was really the driving force from changing it to from the pyramid right to the my plate. If you ask a child about a, the food pyramid, they have no idea what you're talking about. That is not something that people use anymore. The concept is we eat off a plate, right? We want this well balanced. So if we quickly look at this, we see half our plate consists of fruits and vegetables, a little bit more vegetables than fruit. And then about the other half is grains and protein, a little bit more grains than protein, and then some dairy. Um, I find in just conversations with folks, the most that people are struggling with are uh, typically are that fruits and vegetables section. Normally we're having enough grains um, and, and protein but we're really kind of struggling on the fruits and the vegetables. So easy ideas and easy ways that we can add fruits and vegetables to our diet, right? We should, our goal should be to eat from three out of five of these at every single meal. But that being said, the goal for adults is like two and a half cups of vegetables per day. Um, you know, that's a lot. So if you're saving that, I know most people, their dinner plate is, you know, some kind of protein, some kind of grain, some kind of vegetable, maybe a little dairy in the form of, you know, cheese or something, or maybe you're having yogurt in the evening or something. Uh, but the problem is if we save that vegetable for dinner time, that's a lot of vegetable to eat. <laughs> you know, whether you're having it as a side and a salad, it's a lot. So trying to stretch it throughout the day. Breakfast is probably the most difficult part to get vegetables in, Right. Um, we can do it in an omelet or an egg scramble. Smoothies are a fantastic way to get our veggies in, right? Kind of blend them up with a little fruit, maybe some yogurt in there, some chia seeds. Um, but really, we want to try to incorporate throughout the day. If we can't eat our veggies for breakfast, what about a morning snack that incorporates um, vegetables in it? And we're going to talk a lot about snacks coming up, but just things to think about. Yeah. You know, I'm not a big breakfast person. I always like to say it's not my favorite meal of the day because I don't really love breakfast items. So for me, you know, our mind knows it's breakfast. Our bodies doesn't really know. Our bodies are hungry and they want nourishment. So whatever um, you're going to eat that's going to be nice and well balanced and give you protein and fiber, then you guys go for it. Lots of times, I promise you, I am eating a salad at 10 a.m. I'm eating leftovers. Um... I'm just, I'm eating whatever my body needs at that moment. So is it better to eat, you know, um, a veggie salad with chicken and, and all these, you know, protein and fiber at 10 a.m. or is it better to eat waffles, right? <laughs> yeah. One's going to give us more nutrients than the other. You're so right. I'm so glad you mentioned that, Bianca, because, you know, sometimes we get stuck, you know, like mm. breakfast food. Breakfast food is eggs, bacon a bagel, cream cheese. It's, it doesn't have to be, no. you know, I mean, marketing in America makes you think that's what you need. Yes. But when I'm in Mexico, I'm eating burritos for breakfast, you know, quesadillas, yes. soup is a mm. nice way to start, you know, a breakfast, that same soup that we talked about, you can totally have that. And that's soothing to the stomach in the morning, mm. vegetables in there. If you decided to, you know, you got some beans or whatever kind of protein, that's a great breakfast too. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing anything's wrong with the eggs and the bacon, but you know, having that often can, you know, present a lot of problems. So yeah. try to you know, vary, you know, yeah. your breakfast foods. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. such a fantastic point too. I know that again, I said I mentioned earlier in the presentation, I always learn things from participants and um I'll never forget a couple of years ago I was doing a kids class and I asked about people's breakfast and some kids raised their hands and they said, you know, um, I eat noodles and vegetables in the morning and I eat, um, and you know, 
a wrap with different things in it or a leftover soup from the night before. And at, at first I was questioning it, but then, you know, like Aaliyah mentioned, you know, here in the States, breakfast is very typical breakfast items, a little bit starchy, some lots of sweets and sugars. Um, you know, the, the argument about a donut is donut breakfast or is it dessert, right? Uh, <laughs> but other countries are really, you know, eating um, or different ethnicities are eating a, a wide variety of items that maybe we wouldn't consider breakfast. So I've really tried to, you know, condition myself to get out of that mentality and really just, you know, um, oh, broaden uh, it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Feel free to um, put in the chat some of your breakfast ideas as well. Mm. We'd love to hear. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Please. I love, I love learning different things. I love that avocado toast has become popular too. I feel like that's got some oh, variety to it. I love avocados. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. There's so much you can do with that. Oh. Yes. That's a good one, Bianca. All right, guys, tips for eating out. So before I even get started on this, I always like to say, um, you know, this conversation can go two ways. If you guys, if people are going out to eat once a week and you know, it's your treat that week, or, you know, um, you order in, you know, once or twice a week, it, that's okay if you want the burger and the French fries and the Coca-Cola, right? Life is very much about balance. Um, but also, you know, if you're busy and you're ordering and eating out a lot, maybe considering some slight changes to your orders to help you be overall healthy. I will give an example from my own personal life. Um, I don't eat out that much or order in because it's just expensive. Um, but when I do, for me, I like to have a little bit of a balance because it makes me feel physically better. If you're typically cooking at home, right, and you're eating a lot of variety of things, lots of fruits and vegetables and, you know, um, greens, eating out and eating a meal that might be heavily fried or, a, you know, um, high in fat is not going to make you feel great. So if you're going to eat out, right, you have a couple of options. You can, like I said, go for it and, you know, have that full on meal. But if you're eating out more often, then definitely make small changes, right? And by that, I mean, you know, maybe you have the first drink is a soda. And then after that first soda, you start drinking water, right? Maybe instead of getting the fries on the side, you do a side salad. Or what I do often, because fries are one of my favorites, um, but I'll eat the entire plate. So what I always do is I get a sharing plate for the table. Like if I'm out with two people or three people, I said, you want to, let's, let's get a French fry for the table. Or if you're really craving something, you know, let's get it to share. Um, you know, and you could even do that with your meals too, right? Like if you're, if you know the portion is going to be big, instead of, you know, two or three people getting a pasta, one person getting a pasta, one person getting a salad, one person getting something else, and then kind of splitting and sharing. So sometimes, you know, that's good for our, our stomachs and also good for our wallets as well. We're not spending as much, everyone getting their own individual meal, right? And Simple if you, thing. So, if sorry, you, Leah, if, go ahead. If you do, take half of it home, mm, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, a lot of times if you go to places, you know, like barbecues and stuff, which is, I mean, we, we all love barbecue. But it's huge portions. <laughs> you know, you can always take the rest home for, you know, the next evening. Maybe you ordered some roast chicken, right? Or maybe some fried chicken, whatever. Have like two of them, you know, at dinner, take the rest home, and maybe you'll have them with a salad the next day. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, definitely. And I love the fact that, you know, you said you want to have soda, have one. Right. And then drink water because water is also going to fill you up as well. Yes. You know? Yeah, definitely. Right. Um, something that I, I'll, I do now just in my own conscious is, is I try to avoid the bread basket, the, the bowl of, you know, tortilla and salsa, like those <laughs> things again, um, you know, they're, they're going to kind of fill you up. They're going to, you know, um, even before you even start to order the meal, right? So a couple of different things. If you have great self-control, wonderful for you. You can have a few or you can have a piece. That's great. A lot of the times though, like if I'm going like, especially like maybe like a Mexican restaurant where they fill that bowl up or, you know, you take two and you're refilled. <laughs> I'll ask them, you know, like after the first, you know, bowl, I, you know, no more tortillas or I won't even, sometimes if I know like I don't want to eat a big meal, I'll just ask them to not even put it on the table. 
getting a salad and asking for dressing on the side or sauce on the side, right? Yeah. And you can even, in some restaurants, I know I've done this sometimes, I'll ask the waiter, you know, if this is going to be like made right now, uh, whole of salt. Mm. You can do that too. Yeah. Sometimes mm. it depends on where you're going. You can just say, you know, if there's, you know, ask the chef not to make the chicken with any salt. Uh, you know. Yeah. But For times, sure, right? Yeah. The sauces have salt in it. Mm. You yep. Know? So where you can control it, it doesn't yeah. hurt to ask. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've actually recently I've done this. Um, and I, I think, I think it was more because we like ordered two pizzas or something. I don't know at a dinner and I actually asked them if they could wrap up half of it before they even brought it out. Cause I said to myself, you know, I'm, I'm not going to order half. I'm going to get the whole thing, but I didn't, I knew that I wasn't going to eat all of it. So I said, Oh, can you just bring out half for me? And they, no problem. They wrapped it up. They brought out the box and they brought out the, the plate for me. It was perfect. And this way I wasn't even like tempted to overeat and, and feel kind of sick. <laughs> awesome. Mm. Guys, simple yep. things like, you know, switching the chicken from fried to grilled or, um, removing things like bacon, right? Um, so those little little tips can really help you again. Again, if you go out once a week on a Friday night and you want to enjoy yourself, then by all means, don't, you know, you don't want to be focusing and picking apart your dinner. But if you're eating out more frequently than maybe you would like, or maybe you want to get on the bandwagon to be a little bit healthier, like I mentioned, it makes me feel better. Um, you know, just some easy, easy, easy tips. I'm going to skip the stretch break because I know Aliyah is going to cook us a great recipe. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about snacking. So <laughs> snacking is probably my downfall. I love to, if I'm sitting at my desk all day, I'm snacking. I like to sit at the, on the couch at the end of the night and snack. Um, but really, it's it's really good to start becoming conscious of snacking. So this is snacking during quarantine, but of course, you know, we're, we're kind of out of that stage now. Uh, but just snacking in general, a lot of us are still working either from home completely or partly from home. So um, definitely something to consider. So just some tips. We We'll love for you guys to choose healthier snacks. So I mentioned earlier incorporating fruits and vegetables into your snacks. So if you're going to do um, a guacamole, for instance, right? We talked about the avocado, how amazingly healthy that is for us. Making that small change from using a chip or a pita um, to using a bell pepper or a carrot or a tomato, a cucumber, right? Making that small shift. Now we're adding in some fresh veggies, some fresh fruits. Did you talk about making your own tortilla at home, though? Oh, I didn't. Yeah. So pita bread, guys, just get you some pita bread, cut them into like little triangles, add a little bit of olive oil, any kind of herb that you want, like dry mm. thyme. You throw that in the oven, toast those chips for about, depending on your oven, 10 to 15 minutes. You've got your own homemade pita chips. And as Bianca mentioned, you're controlling the salt, mm. right? Rolling. Yeah. So just wanted to throw that in there. It's the chef in me. Yes. <laughs> yes. So good. Um, I, but so things like the hummus. Is, you you still happened? do the festival. I said, I, I don't want to take them away from the yeah. festival. Though, because even though you're doing pita, that's still a lot of carbs, right? Yeah. So what I, I always like to say, because I, I have this conversation lots with kids and parents, is um, think about it like this, right? Have your serving of pita chips, potato chips, have your serving, right? Feel okay about that. And then again, it's just like that soda, that one soda, and then move on to water. So do the serving of chips you know, the, whatever it is. And then, and then the rest of your snacking maybe transitions to carrots and veggies and things like that. Um, or maybe, you know, you're, you bring the, the pita with the guacamole to work. And then when you're at home, you're sticking to the fresh fruits and veggies, right? Again, kind of finding that balance because honestly, sometimes I want those salty chips and I don't want that fresh vegetable. Um, you know, we, we, we can't be so hard on ourselves when it comes to food and diet and nutrition, behavioral changes, um, you know, you know, making small changes to gear us a little bit healthier. They take time. 
right? And like I yeah. said, small changes is where we can be really successful. Um, so if maybe you're not taking away the chips, maybe you're just adding carrots, right? Small change that is doable so, is, so we can be successful. Is, pop, is popcorn a safe um, snack? Because I love popcorn. Yes, yeah. definitely. Definitely okay. can be a great snack. But like any snack, right? If we're getting it from the movie theater and adding extra butter, no. we're gonna. <laughs> no, but if we are we are making it, we can air pop it. We can pop it in the pot. They make like low salt popcorns now, um, like that are microwavable. I make my own. I pop my own, and then I add, you of course know, you do. my my little seasonings to it. Oh my god, I add uh, herbs de, herbs de Provence, which is just like an herbal. Mm. Right? Sometimes I'll put some um, nutritional yeast in there, which gives mm. that cheese flavor mm -hmm. instead of putting a cheese, um, whatever, they, a cheese um, sprinkle or whatever. A yeah. um, little bit of salt and flaxseed oil tastes like butter. Ooh, <laughs> that I've never done. Mm. My that popcorn does not last more than yeah. 10 minutes. In this and I'm going to head into the kitchen while you finish up the slide. Awesome. Perfect. <laughs> Um, yes. So I like to think of my snacks and this might just be me. Um, I like to think about snacks that are going to like take me time to consume. Right. So if I'm at work and I'm trying to like, just, you know, um, you know, get through the day and I, I, I want some, you know, some energy and fiber and protein, I'll do like a handful of nuts. But if I'm sitting on the couch at the end of the night and I'm going to sit there and snack, I'm definitely not going to do nuts because, a small portion, right? It's about like, if you cup your hand, that's like the portion of nuts that we should have. Uh, so for me, I like things that like take time that, you know, I can like chew on. Um, I can't just like, I don't want to take handfuls and just throw them in my mouth. Right. Cause then we're going to be, we're going to be eating a lot and we're going to be raising that calorie count and things like that. So things that take time are really fantastic. Um, simple tip, don't bring the bag with you, right? Wherever you go, if, whether you're at your desk or you're at the table or on the couch, um, portion out. Do a portion, you know, a, you know, whatever the portion is in the back of the bag or do two portions and then see, okay, do I want more? Wait a few minutes, right? Otherwise, if we take that bag with us, I am classic. I've eaten the entire bag. The bag is gone. <laughs> Think about why you're snacking too. I always like to say this. If it's just something that, you know, you enjoy doing at the end of the day or you enjoy doing, you know, while you do your data entry or something, you know, every day and you like to snack during that, that's fine. But if we're snacking for no reason, like we're bored or anxious, right? That's that's a good time to kind of reevaluate, you know, why you're snacking um, or why you're just overeating in general. All right. Some other snack ideas. I mentioned hummus and veggies, peanut butter and celery. You can see on the screen, any kind of fruit, cheese and fruit, anything that's got protein and fiber, those two things, they help us stay full, right? Longer. Those are the things that we want. And then of course, we kind of talked all through this already, but building your own snacks, um, building your own trail mix. So trail mix are one of those things, right? They could be really healthy or they could be a little bit on the sweet side. They might have lots of chocolate in there and things like that. Doing it yourself is a great way to control again and save money. You definitely, if you're buying the bag of cat, um, sorry, pretzels and a bag of nuts, um, and maybe like a bag of like little chocolate, dark chocolate, you're going to be able to make a way more trail mix than just buying that bag. And I find that trail mix can be kind of expensive depending on, you know, the kind that you're buying. We talked about eating your veggies, making those combos, right? So not just yogurt, but yogurt and fruit, maybe with some nuts, some granola, prepping ahead. That's a big one for me. I know that if like there is nothing like semi prep, like I'm not going to come home at five o'clock and make myself a hummus. Like I make a big batch of hummus in the beginning of the week, put it in a container and it lasts me for days. Then I can come home and I just grab it. I'm not making it, you know. So again, that goes planning ahead. Some of that batch cooking, right? All right. So we're going to briefly talk about this, just the calories. Um, so lots of restaurants now do list the calories, uh, not everywhere, but a, a decent amount of places. Now, whether you're looking at this or not, this kind of goes back to that conversation about 
what are our approaches when we're eating out? I mean, are we eating out once a week and we want to enjoy ourselves? And maybe I'm not looking at this. If I'm eating out more often, maybe this is something to start to consider. And, you know, how you're considering it is, again, dependent on yourself. Is it making you change your choices? Is it making you consider what you eat for the rest of the day? Right? Just something to think about. Um, so these are some facts, and I you can't you you can read them if you can see them, but I'll just go over a couple of key ones. Um, I like to mention that you know we talked about looking at menus and making small changes, right? Looking for keywords like grilled or fried um, or smothered. <laughs> I always laugh at that one. Things are smothered, um, but just kind of making those small changes. Something to think about: a hundred calories per serving is about moderate. About 400 or higher is going to be high, uh, 400 or more is considered high for that portion that you're eating. Um, they make those like little, we talked about popcorn. They make those like little 100 calorie bags of popcorn now. Um, for me, you know, depending on the cost, of course, because sometimes those things that are portioned out already are going to be expensive, more expensive. Um, so you can do that yourself, right? You can get the bag of chips and portion out those calorie, those, um, portions already for yourself. And you know, like, okay, this is a hundred calories or 200 calories, right? All of the nutrition facts, everything is based off of, um, they say 2000 calories for adults and about 1200 for children, but that is most definitely per person. I don't like to focus necessarily on calories, um, but it, it, it can affect, of course, our weight, right? And then our weight can in turn affect lots of different things. So increasing calories could potentially increase our weight, um, which could, you know, increase our risk for lots of different things, you know, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, um, things like that. All right, physical activity. I know you guys briefly talked about physical activity um, last week, but we always kind of like to bring it up um, just as like a friendly reminder. So we're talking about eating healthy and we really cannot talk about eating healthy without talking about physical activity. And physical activity is so individualized, looks so different per person. It does not have to be, it's not, you know, one size fits all. Um, there are, we do kind of classify our exercise to moderate or vigorous. And, you know, hopefully you guys remember a little bit about that from last week. Uh, but an, a mix of the two is really nice. But if for you, you're starting off and everything is kind of moderate exercise, like you're just doing light walks, um, maybe you're, you know, doing a little bit of like a, a really, really light yoga class, you know, where it's like a lot of breathing and meditating and stretching. That is fantastic, right? We just want to make sure that we are finding something that fits for ourselves. It does not have to look the same for everyone, but just something for ourselves. And, and I will be quite honest with you, my physical activity changes um, depending on the season a lot of the times, right? In the summer, I'm outside a lot. I'm walking a lot. I'm in whatever body of water I can get to. I'm swimming. Um, as the winter comes, you know, I, I, I find it even hard to get out and go to the gym because I don't want to be outside. I want to be, I don't want to have to keep going in and out as much as possible. So for the winter time, I'm doing a lot of home activities. I have a couple of light weights, very light weights, things that I can store easily. Um, you know, a couple of bands, right. And then I'm, I'm doing, you know, some YouTube videos. I know that there is a studio by my house that you can actually um, log on and do virtual courses, which is really fantastic. So I don't have to actually go to the studio. So anything like that, that's, you know, again, per person. All right, guys, I am wrapping up my section here. Leah is going to jump in the kitchen and do a fantastic cooking demo for us. But does anyone have any questions, comments, suggestions? I know Leah mentioned, you know, put your breakfast ideas in the chat. Like I said, I'm always learning things from participants. Um, we always love to hear from you guys. 
Hey Bianca, so that was great. I so I <laughs> for breakfast, I like to have um like some toast and then I put some like garlic and tomato on it. And then recently to have a little protein, I put some like fish or any like leftover mm. protein that I have. Um and I really it's really filling and and you know, usually when you get to work after you have breakfast and you're like, oh man, I'm, I'm hungry because I had such like a wimpy breakfast, but it's nice to have yeah. like a nice filling one. Yes. Yes. I remember when I was, when I was doing a lot of public transportation to the city for our office, I would eat a sandwich because it was easy <laughs> and I would just eat it like a sandwich for breakfast. It was normal for me. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you have. I mean, you know, breakfast can be anything. Like we said, thanks for, you know, mentioning that Christopher. Mm. People get stuck, you know? Like, oh, what am I going to have for breakfast? I don't have any eggs. Okay, well, what do you have? <laughs> and this recipe, you know, just happens to be one of those recipes that can definitely be breakfast. It can be snack. It can be a side dish. And I'm going to be making today a sweet potato hash. Mm. So, right, a lot of times we, we use the white potatoes, which are fine, right? But for me, sweet potatoes top it all. And I think... With sweet potatoes, right? I got to go to my RD. Less, it's a lower glycemic um, index, correct, Bianca? Mm -hmm. Yep, and it's got it's got a little bit of more fiber in there, so it, it goes into our blood a little bit slower too. So that's you know something always to consider. Whether you know we want things to keep us fuller longer, and yes, sweet potatoes. I should have mentioned that as a stock item too, Aaliyah. Oh yeah, you can totally throw this into stock. Yeah, and yeah. So. What I like to do, sometimes people like to take their sweet potatoes and just peel them and go ahead and put them into the um, frying pan and make it. I like to to parboil. Mm -hmm. You know, I come, you know, my background, my, my peoples, they make, you know, like serious like potato hash, right? And it's always <laughs> cooked in advance. <laughs> okay. And um, in addition to the sweet potato today, we're going to use some onion. And this recipe can be found on the City Harvest website in our recipe bank. So we're going to use an onion and I'm going to use a little bit of garlic and some thyme, some dried thyme. Now you are definitely free to add anything you want to this. I mean, you can choose other tubers, right, to put in. And I just brought a few of them out, which I'm not using actually today, but I just wanted to show you. I've got a parsnip here, which mm. could have easily gone into this. Uh, this is the Japanese sweet potato, the red one. Guys, if you have not tried this, please do. These are actually really yams. See, we could have like a whole discussion <laughs> on yams and sweet potatoes. Are. But what they call like sweet potatoes here, they're really yams, okay? This is a sweet potato, a Japanese one. But this could also go in there, very sweet tasting. It has a really nice texture to it, creamy. One of my favorite things to add to my hash, turnips. Okay, mm. and we're in abundance. I love these. I love these in the hash, soup, stews, turnips are awesome. And then I'm just gonna garnish with a little bit of um, parsley that I had in the refrigerator. You know, Bianca mentioned waste, right? When I see things starting to go limp, like for instance, my parsley, I said, okay, what this, this was a perfect recipe today because I said, okay, I get to use up the rest of that parsley. It adds so much flavor. So, Aaliyah, CC said I bake them. Do you do you mean that you bake the sweet potatoes or the turnips? I'm curious. Probably, probably the potatoes and the turnips because you can mm -hmm. do that too. Yeah. You can totally do that too. It, and I love the way CC is really expressing the different cooking methods involved because the flavor is so much different when you mm -hmm. bake them or you cook them, you know, boil them for a little while and then put them in that skillet, the flavor is intense. And also the reason I like to go ahead and cook them first is because look how easily this comes right off the skin, right? Much easier to handle. And so what I would do now, and you know, the consistency to what, how you want to cook them is up to you, okay? Mm. I actually left these in about, I think it was about maybe 15 minutes or so. So they are kind of soft, but not soft enough to fall apart, which is exactly how I like them. And also sweet potatoes, kids love sweet potatoes. So if you have any children around, 
definitely, you know, there are so many different ways that you can make these potatoes. They're sweet. You know, kids love them. So, and feel free to mix them with the white potatoes as well if you want. You can do whatever you want, you know. Okay. And so then you could throw a red onion in there. I happen to have a white one today. So I'm just going to show you how we like to cut that up. I'm taking off the, not the root. I always keep the root intact, right? Because we want to be able to cut this, right? And, and, and let it stay together. And I'll show you why. Okay. There are plenty of ways to cut onions. Okay. <laughs> my favorite technique. Okay. <laughs> Basically you cut off the top to create like a nice steady um, bottom, right? Surface, cut it down the center and you see how my fingers are like bare clawing it over here just to, you know, give me some support. Right. I'm not going to use all of this onion, just half of it. After cutting it in half, you can just simply peel the whole piece off in one section. People always complain about crying when they're cutting onions. The faster you do it, the better off you are. <laughs> you can run cold water. My grandmother used to do that too. But, you know, when you learn how to cut it quickly, it saves all of that problem. Yes. Right? So yeah. <laughs> if I cut down, I cut down, um, let me see, maybe a half an inch vertically, right? And then mm -hmm. I go across, I'm sorry, horizontally. I went this way and then I went vertically. Okay. And then when you actually cut your onion, you've got these wonderful little slices already there for you. See, like so. This makes it much easier, right? Now, I would go ahead. What I did is I've made some um, hash in advance, right? Because my camera does not go all the way over to my stove. But what would happen here is I would put these onions into the pan, right? Cut up, mince up a little bit of garlic, put those in the pan, and just let them saute for a few minutes. Let them get some brown on there, right? And then you would add your sweet potatoes, right? The whole cooking process takes like maybe, what, 20 minutes? And the oil of choice today was grapeseed oil. You could use olive oil if you want. It all depends. I just like the flavor of grapeseed oil. And then for seasoning, cumin, a little bit of salt, some pepper. I love pepper. So there's a lot of pepper on my potatoes. <laughs> and smoked paprika, okay? So I'm, I'm hoping that most people have tasted smoked paprika. If not, go get you some smoked paprika. <laughs> it really make, it really makes a difference. Do you like um, smoked back paprika, um, Bianca? Yeah, I always have it in my cabinet. Yes. Paprika is a big, big thing in my household too. <laughs> right? Oh, and then I added that thyme that I told you about. Um, the dry thyme, you can use mm. fresh as well, right? Okay, so let me just move this cutting board here. And I took out my pretty plate for you guys today because I thought the orange would go so nicely. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, oh, I didn't do the parsley. Let me just mince up some parsley right quick, guys. I rinsed it off before we started. That'll get a little color in there. Exactly. Now you can go ahead and put this on fresh like I'm doing after the fact. Or if you wanted to just add it to the end of your saute, you could totally do that. Some people don't like, you know, parsley fresh like this. Parsley used to get such a bad rap. I mean, it used to be served strictly as garnish, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you're always supposed to be able to eat whatever's on your plate. <laughs> people would always throw it away. And it's so high in like vitamin C anti-cancer um oh my god it's so good but you can use um parsley you can use cilantro you can yeah. use fresh bay i mean fresh uh, basil anything that you yeah. prefer and so i'm gonna just put my sweet potatoes on this plate they look good i've actually already tasted one so <laughs> <laughs> you already know. <laughs> I already know, right? 
And so just a little peep at what it looks like, right? It's kind of like just boring right now. But as soon as you add that parsley mm. to it, And I know this, this, I don't know, there's something about fresh herbs in food. You know, before I studied culinary arts, I used to cook all my herbs, but it's so much different. Ooh. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Losing so it. This, right? Does it look good against that green? Mm. Plating is everything. That's another thing you want to do, right? You want to make sure when you're presenting meals, you know, for your family, that they look good. Yeah. Right? But of course you have to like to cook. I don't know. I'd like to find out how many cooks we have in the audience too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what else could go on here too? Oh my God, Bianca, I just thought of like some, I have some Parmesan cheese you could sprinkle. Mm. Would that be okay? Yeah, <laughs> we're going to, we're all those food groups again, Aaliyah, right? We got our uh, veggies, we got some uh, dairy there. I love putting an egg on this. Yeah, I do like an easy over, right? Or a sunny side up, or I like, I don't want to call it a fried egg, but it's basically a fried egg. <laughs> no, that, that's yeah. And don't we find that a lot? I know I get that when I go to Koreatown. Oh my God, I love all of the meal yeah. because it's all almost always has an egg on it, a fried mm, egg. Yep. Mm. Any questions? It's good. I'm going to tell you, you don't have to ask. <laughs> We have made this recipe plenty of times, right? I know that this is such an easy, simple, few ingredients and just so good. Breakfast. You want to add it to breakfast. <laughs> and you know, who's, you know who's sitting right here, right, waiting? That loud dog. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's life right there. <laughs> So, yeah. I always like when I when I think about like different recipes that I'm going to make if like if it doesn't seem like whole or filling like I always think about like how can I make this more filling right so like mm. if I if I know that I want rice and beans right even though rice and beans is like that complete protein that you were saying you know how can I make it so that I can then get my veggies and uh fruits and uh, and maybe a different type of protein mixed into that and how how do i make a complete meal so like when you have a like a wonderful recipe like this for you know sweet potato hash you know okay so we have our veggies how can we then add mm. you know fruit and other things into that incorporates all those different things and i think of it almost like as a game as a puzzle you know because it can get very like monotonous you know like oh now I have to plan, now I have to go, yeah. and then I have to do all this prep work, you know? But it's like, how can I make it and have fun and experiment? Yeah. And, and it is work, Chris, you know, it is. But like I said, that's why I'd like to know how many chefs or how many cooks we have, because I love cooking, so I don't mm. mind the prep. But with something like this, you could easily add like a fresh piece, a fresh piece of fish to it. I've been steaming fish lately which like takes what, 10 minutes? Yeah. You know, right, right. and the prep, the prep behind that is basically for me, scallions, ginger, right? A little bit of onions. You have your little steamer set up, a little bit of salt, lemon on your fish, pepper, whatever, throw it in there. You can throw that right on top of this. And if you have like a little, if you have salad, you can also add a salad to it. That would be what I would do with this, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's a chicken breast. Okay, you know, I'm gonna flag Trey Joe's. They have these wonderful bags of frozen chicken pieces. Takes Ooh. 10 minutes on the stove, <laughs> right? And you can just add it. Or Chris, what about that whole chicken that you might cook on Sunday? Mm -hmm. And you might still have some left over mm -hmm. on Wednesday, right? Mm -hmm. Add a piece of it to, you know, your, your sweet potato hash. And this hole's in the refrigerator for about, not in this refrigerator, it's gone today, but, <laughs> You can hold this for about maybe two to three days, you know? And then if you don't finish it, add it to that stew or that soup. That mm. you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Right? right, we're using our leftovers, definitely. Yeah, so, yeah. So please feel free to try it. Add your own ingredients. Everybody has different ideas. We'd love to hear from you. Come on back next time when we're here. When's the next time we're here, Chris? 
Um, yeah, but... We're going to be here uh, next month, so we'll see you next okay. month. And I, I believe we have two next month, so that's very exciting. <laughs> awesome. And I think I'm going to be doing a breakfast burrito for one of those recipes. We'll get to show people who like One of eggs. my faves. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you, Aaliyah. And we hope to see you uh, next time. And have a great rest of your day. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye.